to put sprues onto your work uh, so that we can then put it onto a tree and then that can be cast in metal. So we can cast that in aluminium, brass, copper, silver. Um, that's the main ones we use at the moment, possibly bronze. So the idea of sprueing is to create a channel for the metal to run towards your model, whatever that model might be. This piece obviously has two sprues on it, so that the metal will run along that entire shape. This little piece only has one, because the metal will fill that gap quite well. More complicated models need much more complicated sprueing, so that the metal can uh, get to all parts of the object. Got lots of different sizes of sprue wax. So that, you don't want to put a massive sprue onto a tiny little model, you put little delicate sprues onto smaller objects. Um, but the function of it is just to make sure that the metal will flow to all parts of your model. This is one of the students' rapid prototype models. These are good if you can make these uh, from the machines down the stairs, because we can cast directly from them rather than having to make a different model afterwards. You can just give me these and cast them into metal straight away. I'm going to try and choose a part of the object that doesn't have very much detail, because once the sprue, once the, once the tree is cast in metal, you cut the sprue off and uh, file back the metal to tidy it all up, so you don't want to destroy any of the detail on the model while you're doing that. So, I'm going to put a sprue in here, and then another piece in here, so that the metal will flow to both parts of the model. To attach the sprues, uh, which are wax, incidentally, we use a soldering iron. This is a little soldering iron with a little shovel end, which is really good for melting the end of the sprue wax into a little pool. And it's good for getting a wee angle on it as well. So we'll just get that melted. And then I will just put that on there. It's not very tidy. And I'll just wait for that to cool down for a sec. Move that around. And I'm just wanting to melt the wax so that it adheres quite well to the surface of the model, so that it's not going to fall off when we invest it. So it'll leave a little bit of length. And we want to have that at about a 45 degree angle to where your model is. Now that's going to stay there by itself. And I'm just going to attach another little piece on here. melting the end of that wax so it makes and then we'll just cut through that with a soldering iron pull that off and then put those two together if you don't think you've got a good enough bond with your model you just take one of the really small little bits of wax and just drip it around almost like a little weld and the same on your little connection. Just make sure that's got a really good bond. And at this little connection bit here. So that's now ready to be made into part of a tree and to go into a recast. This has been a slightly different shape. I'm going to try and work out where it's going to fit in the casting class. So I'm going to have to do it at a slight angle. So you can either do it at that kind of angle, this kind of angle. I think like this is probably the best way to fit it in the flask. So. I'm just going to put screws on all the corners and then one leading into the middle so that the metal will spread out across the flat surface. Just warm that up. So I'm 
just try to build a little structure. So that will support itself. I'm going to put a, a thicker piece of wax into the centre so that you have a, the most of the metal coming into the centre of the form and then spreading out. And with a wax model, obviously because you're putting heat next to it, you're being careful just to really heat the, the wax, the sprue on this and let it drip down because you don't want to actually damage the model. Another couple of little connectors to the bottom of the piece. more wax at the bottom of these. And that's pretty much ready to go. Just to make our little tree up. Um, and I'm using a little four inch flask so I'm just going to put a little short stem in the middle if I was using one of the taller flasks I'd obviously this would be much taller I'm just going to melt the wax in. use a little spare of it just to build it up Be relatively straight. This is how the metal is going to enter the flask. And the casting. It's not too bad. So I don't want anything to be much higher than about there in the flask. So I'm going to have to just judge it as I attach the little objects on. Speed up earlier on. Normally, you start with the larger objects around the top and the smaller objects around the bottom because it makes it easier to work out how to space them out in the flask. And it also means that when the flask is upside down, the volume of metal is going into the bottom first and then filling up to the smaller pieces afterwards. So, some on here. I'm just going to put that on at that angle. I just melt the wax of the central sheet. And 
you're basically wanting to make sure that it's really well attached so that when you go in to invest it, things don't come flying off. So you don't lose bits. Just tap that along the sides. And really when you're doing this you kind of have your objects already screwed out in front of you and you're basically trying to fit them into whatever space you've got and the smaller the flask the more difficult it is basically because you've got much less space to play with if you look at these when they're traditionally done in jewelry shops you usually find that everything on the tree is the same size and of the same scale and everything goes in perfect little 45 degree angles so that they all fill totally equally but uh, in this case unless somebody is casting in a lot of multiples each one of the flasks has got lots of different objects in it so I'm just trying to fit them all in um, I'm trying to make sure that none of these pieces are getting more than about uh, 10 mil from the edge of the inside of the flask and that's slightly further in than the edge of this piece of rubber. And these on. So. And I'm not putting an awful lot of things on this street just for this little demo. But, uh, most of the time, you're trying to be really clever with the space and fit as much in as you can because you're saving on all the other materials by getting as much work in each flask. Most of the time, you don't really want the bits to be touching each other. But if you've got things that are either very linear or that are taking up a lot of mass, you can actually tack them together so that when the metal flows into the uh, flask, they cast all as sort of one object and then you separate them afterwards. And uh, certainly, when you're given a lot of big pieces, that's the only way you can really fit them all in. shrink sleeve around it and I'll just do it perfectly. Same thing. And you want to cover all the holes obviously but also because the investment bubbles up
going to put an, a, a mask on to weigh out the investment. Yeah, she just needs to know how to weigh things. I don't know. Do they seem to get it accurate, or are they? No. <laughs> to make sure that it seals properly. So just leave it in here for about two minutes. Somebody set power. into the flask, hold the flask at an angle, pour it either, there's either a cross or one of these metal bars which just breaks the, breaks the investment and stops it landing right on top of your model and breaking the sprues off. And obviously pouring it from the edge means that it'll get into all the nooks and crannies. Pour that over it, covering the top of the flask. Yeah. Cut away any of the spare stuff. 
stuff. Yeah. So then just down there, down there, and then that's a little bit of that end. But then the cross and water so that they that way. I'm gonna take off as much of this as I can. And then yeah, lots of play and because it will just get in the way. And the uh glass needs to be able to sit level in the kiln without falling over. So got his little feet to sit on. And this is the lip that will uh, sit in the machine, so we don't want anything on that either, or the vacuum won't work. So, this is the rubber base that we were using before. Just take that away because obviously that will go in the kiln. Because I've got, uh, so that's our, the bottom of our wax tree that we were building up in there earlier on. And all those bits of wax are now facing down that way. <coughs> Ready to go in the kiln. And because I've got more than one flask in the kiln, I'm going to give it a letter and I'm going to write on the top what material we're going to cast in. So I don't get mixed up. Then... Two flasks you kill. And that's going to go in there at the front. So we'll do that one first. Then that goes in overnight to burn out all the wax and bones and stuff. Thank you.